Hey Art Nerds, we are going to be talking about the drying stages of clay. And there are six that I'm really going to be talking to you guys about as our clay goes from being wet to dry to being a finished ceramic piece. So let's get started with our first one, and that is slip. Slip is a liquid mixture of clay. You take a regular piece of clay, add some extra water, blend it up really good, and reach the consistency of pudding. And that's that's what we want for a slip. It's really good in, I guess, gluing pieces of clay together. We use it for attaching one piece to another and making sure it's an ex a secure attachment in a process that we call scoring and slipping. Now, scoring and slipping, oh, we start with adding scratch marks to your clay. So like deep hatches, in your clay, whether it's using a fancy needle tool or you can use a plastic fork. And what happens when you do these scoring marks, you are creating these deep gouges that the slip is going to like seep into. And after you do the scoring, you add a bunch of slip, you're able to smoosh them together. And when you smoosh them together, you are forcing that slip to go into those deep hatch marks that you made to make the connection between the two pieces stronger. So that's the real uh, selling point with doing scoring and slipping together. It has a really tight seal between the two and it blends those two pieces of clay together. If you just did slip, you know, the con it would connect, but it probably wouldn't be a very strong connection. Um, and that's really important, especially if you're doing the handle on a mug or anything that there's going to be some weight or some pressure or tension on that joint. Okay. After you smoosh it together, you blend it. Uh, to make sure you get both pieces are connected really well. And then you can do final touching and smoothing at the very end. And you would repeat this process every time you attach two pieces of clay together. If you don't score and slip, you can't guarantee that a piece will be connected and connected well with good integrity. So make sure you do both of them. You know, you can't guarantee that it would break, okay? Because sometimes you get really lucky or you, you know, just got, did a nice job blending and it secured it really nice. But uh, better safe than sorry. So make sure you score and slip whenever you attach two pieces together. That is the best option for you. Now, the type of clay that you kind of work with when you're attaching pieces of clay together is plastic clay. And that's our building clay. And it has the kind of consistency and it feels kind of like cookie dough in your hands where it's kind of squishy, but it's, you know, just a tiny, tiny bit sticky, but not too much. And that is the type of clay that we like to squish and do pull and do twist. And um, it's really easy to manipulate, which is why it's called plastic. Plastic refers to plasticity, the ease in manipulation of the material. That's why. And as you work with clay, it slowly, slowly gets drier and drier as water evaporates from the clay or gets soaked up uh, by your hands. Or if you have a canvas table, that soaks up some of the water as well. And you'll notice as we keep going through these different stages, we are get to drier and drier clay and further through the project, okay? You will notice uh, if you start working with plastic clay for long enough, it starts to crack and then it gets hard to squish and to move. That's because it's getting closer and closer to what we call the leather hard stage. Now, leather hard basically means that your clay is stiff. It's partially dry, okay? Uh, a good chunk of the water has evaporated from it already. Um, this is actually, you know, sometimes a really good thing. It's wonderful for carving. It's wonderful if you are trying to create something that needs to be supportive because if you're doing, say, uh, legs on an, uh, a figure that you are sculpting, you know, there's a lot of weight on those legs. If you have nice plastic clay, the legs will squish and get kind of out of shape. But if it's leather hard, they'll keep their shape. They'll be nice and strong uh, for the weight that is, you know, on top of them. Same thing with, you know, getting handles on a mug and things like that. You want it to be nice and firm. Otherwise, it can easily lose its shape. Now, you can really tell if something's in the leather hard stage. So like if you have a project and it's sitting out or a hunk of clay and it's sitting on the table and it sits there for a while, you touch it and you'll feel that it's a little bit colder, you know, than normal. It's definitely cooler than room temperature. And that is because you you that's the water evaporating actually from the clay itself. It's very similar to the process that our body goes through to cool ourselves in the summertime, okay, or when we're hot, okay? Your body gets hot, you sweat, and it's the evaporation of the water from the surface of your skin that cools the body. And it's the same water 
that is evaporating from the surface of the clay that's cooling the clay. So you can tell that your clay has been sitting out for a while if it starts to get cold, okay? And you can always tell if there's water still in a clay piece if it is colder than room temperature, which is very different from our fourth stage, which is bone dry. And that's when your clay is completely dry and it's ready to fire. This clay is room temperature because, you know, there's no more water evaporating from it, cooling it down. It's also extremely fragile. You break it at this point and, you know, it will, it will definitely shatter, okay? It's very easy to bump it and break it. So you have to be very gentle with your clay piece at this point. Okay, um, you'll notice as we go through these stages that your clay gets lighter and lighter in color. Um, and that's partially, you know, mainly because of the water evaporating from it. The water makes it a little bit darker, okay? Now, each of these stages I've talked about so far, we kind of classify um, in something called greenware. And that's when we have like any wet or dry clay works that have not yet been bisque fired, which we'll talk about in just a brief moment. And that converts your clay to ceramic. Now, that's sort of clustering these together, okay? Um, greenware specifically referring to your leather hard and your bone dry clay. However, all of them I'm clustering together because there's one thing that keep that's in common between slip, plastic, leather hard, and bone dry clay. And that is the fact that they can be softened, softened with water, okay? If I have a clay piece and it's just plastic clay, you know, I've just been playing around for a short bit. I put it in a bucket of water. It will dissolve or get really soft and smooshy okay if i have a clay piece and it's leather hard or even if it's bone dry okay and i throw it in a bucket of water it will smoosh and eventually over time get to that slip stage okay um because it gets softened with water just accept that fact really cool thing so that means if you mess up on a clay project don't throw away your clay um, either if it's still plastic you know reshape it but if it's not you throw it in a bucket of water and that can be re reclaimed okay so think of it like kind of like recycling so you get it soft you can use it again which is actually really cool and the difference between these uh for here your slip plastic leather hard and bone dry is a little bit of fire okay um clay pieces go through a firing process and that changes it from that clay to ceramic okay and that's the big difference between greenware and the rest of the stuff we're going to be talking about okay greenware is softened with clay and it's before the first firing everything afterwards is something different so we're going to talk about that firing process really quickly and that basically is a process where clay changes into ceramic okay it's an irreversible change and this uh, occurs in the kiln, which we'll talk briefly in a moment. But what I want you to understand is our greenware, which includes our bone dry clay, okay, that is, you know, still can be softened with water. Once it goes through the firing process, it changes the composition of the clay itself. So it's no longer clay after it comes out of the kiln. It comes out, it's what we call bis fired, and then we glaze it, and then it's glaze fired. And the big difference is I can throw bone dry clay in a bucket of water and it gets soft. I can recycle it, I can reclaim it. I have a project that comes out of the firing process, I throw it in a bucket of water and nothing happens, okay? Um, it just gets wet. So that's the big difference, okay? And this firing process takes place in something called a kiln, which is an insulated oven for firing clay. Now, kilns, you know, and the firing process looks different depending on, you know, where you're at, the kind of results you want in your project, all that kind of stuff. You got wood fire, you got raku, you got pit fire, you got electric fire, which is what I have. And these all uh, in the end is are just different ways of converting clay to ceramic. And the big thing is having the right temperature for the right length of time. And it depends, you know, on your process as to what that temperature is and for how long and the type of clay that you're using. But for, you know, what I do for my classes, it gets roughly 1800 degrees. So like, you know, imagine, you know, cookies are like 375. This is 1800 degree and degrees. So that's, that's pretty hot. Okay. And the process itself takes roughly 24 hours. It takes several hours to warm up. It stays super hot for about 12 hours or so, and then it cools back down. And the speed of that process varies depending on, you know, what, um, needs to happen, like what the cone you're at, how hot it needs to get, what speed you set the kiln at, and all that kind of stuff. And so this 
process, okay, converts your clay to ceramic because it's so hot. So that heat is causing a chemical reaction in the material and sort of remakes the composition. And then you end up with what we call bisqueware, okay? And this is ceramic now. It's no longer clay. If I take bisqueware and throw it in the, a bucket of water, it won't get soft, okay? You essentially have stone now, which is pretty cool. Now, the big difference between bisqueware and the other things we talked about is this has been through the firing process one time. Okay, you'll notice that your clay will probably be a lot lighter than it was before. So my example here is now white versus gray. And come, some of the extra cool things about bisqueware is number one, it is porous, which means if I put it under like a sink or something, I'll notice that it soaks up a lot of the water. There's all these tiny little pores, which uh, we'll be talking about a special type of paint that we use that seals up those pores so we can create things like a cup or a bowl that's able to hold liquids without it, you know, getting soaked up by the material or running through the material. Okay. So mumbisqueware is a lot stronger than your bone dry stuff, but it's still breakable. Okay. Ceramics are breakable. Okay. It's just like a normal mug or a plate you might have in the cupboard. You drop it on the floor. Yeah, it's going to break. Okay. And um, there are actually a couple of different ways that your project can get broken. And sometimes that takes place in the firing process itself in the kiln. So there's a couple of things you want to stay away from in the construction stage of your project to help avoid any breaks that could happen um when you see your project finally in the bisque form so there's a couple ways that your project could break so number one is there is a fun fact about clay that as it dries it shrinks okay it just gets not not crazy noticeable smaller okay but it gets a little bit smaller okay which means if you have some really thin pieces of clay attached to a lot quicker clay the thin piece dries out super fast so it shrinks faster than bigger parts or bigger areas of your project okay and if things are drying at different stages they could easily crack and then ultimately break when they're in the kiln secondly is if you have just a solid like a fist of clay and it's a solid piece of clay that takes a very very long time to dry and oftentimes you know we uh encourage one not to have that solid piece of clay because usually we don't have as much don't have those weeks and weeks that you need to have it dry so then you know it gets in the kiln and there might be a still a little bit of water in the clay when it's fired and then it could break if the firing process is not slow enough now that happens because you have water and crushed up rock that make up your clay. Water, the chemical formula is H2O. O is oxygen. Okay, so when you have um, the heat from the kiln warming up, that water turns into gas. Okay, it turns into like water vapor, but um, gas molecules they expand. Okay, when they get hot. And if you're a tiny little gas molecule stuck inside a big lump of clay and you're getting warm, you want to expand, you just bust your way through the clay piece and ultimately break the clay piece. So um, if you have a very, very thick hunk of clay, um, it could cause your clay project actually to explode. As you see in that picture of the rabbit whose behind was a little bit too thick. Anyways, another one is if you have a hollow piece, okay, think making like a bowl and a bowl and you cup them together so you end up having sort of like a hollow tennis ball type thing. And if there's nowhere for the air to go, that uh, can expand as it heats up and it pushes the pieces of your clay separate again and it causes it to break, okay. Um, also, if you don't score and slip things together really well, um, that can also be a uh, chance for things cracking or breaking if they're not as attached as they should be. And also if you have like a dry piece of clay and you attach a new wet piece of clay to it, you know, we talked about how they have different drying stages. Something that's already dry is not shrinking anymore and something that's wet is shrinking. You attach it to it and then it will crack and fall off. Okay. So, um, always double check that you're kind of avoiding some of these things and making sure you score and slip really well to make sure that you can have a finished project that's you know not uh not broken okay if you do however get a project that comes out of the kiln it's completely shattered and shambles it might be because your teacher put it in and it was not 
bone dry and it's a big pile of rubble, okay? Because sometimes, you know, it's, you know, not always your fault, okay? But construction is a very big cause for issues when clay pieces come out of the kiln. Now, I did have a link of a video in the description below. There's actually, uh, it's called uh, How to Repair Broken Bisquare. So check that out. It's a really quick video and very enlightening. So take a look. Now, I've talked about a few times about how there's a special paint, this glaze that you use to put on clay pieces. And that um, is a very special type of paint. And it is a, essentially a glassy coating applied to ceramics before firing. And if you take a look at the image on the far left, it doesn't look glassy, okay? It looks, you know, like a very light blue, okay? It looks kind of boring. And um, this glaze itself when it's in its liquid form looks different than when it's dry which looks different than when it's fired okay so um it takes some, a little bit of planning um to try to figure out what you know is it's going to look like in the end okay now this glaze can do a couple things it adds some cool color it can decorate it it also waterproofs an item so if i have a bisqueware mug you know i don't want to be drinking you know coffee and stuff out of it because it's going to be soaked up by the mug itself and then I have all these nasty coffee bits inside my clay piece that will never get clean if you glaze it and then fire it, you have this nice coating, this uh, glassy coating that will uh, make sure it's, you know, waterproof and food safe. So good time. Anyways, a couple other notes about glaze. When you paint with glaze, uh, the color is usually pretty pale and it's kind of chalky in appearance. If you take a look at that second image, take a close look because those mugs are the exact same mugs that you see in the third image. Now, the big difference between the two is that there is, you know, a firing process right in between, okay? Because uh, ceramic pieces, if they are glazed, go through two firings. One, to change the bone dry clay into ceramic and make it bisqueware. And second, to go from painted bisqueware to glazeware, which we'll talk about in just a brief moment, okay? So, glazes, when they're wet, like I said, look very different than after they are fired. So um, a lot of times it's very helpful to have test tiles uh, that show what glazes look like when they come out of the kiln so you can kind of plan your projects a little bit better. So that's what the last image is. It's a, a test tile board where it has the finished glaze piece, what it looks like when it's done, and then also the name of the glaze itself so it can be attributed to whatever container that it came from. And follow the instructions on the glaze because sometimes they need two or even three layers to make sure it works very well. So speaking of glazeware, um, that is essentially what we call our painted and fired ceramics. And like I said, bisqueware is fired one time and then you paint it with the glaze and then it's fired a second time and that's how you get your glazeware. Anywho, those are the drying stages of clay. I hope this is very helpful. Check out my other videos about ceramics and other projects.